All right, Chetlins, we're going to make a flashcard so I can start to remember your names, but we'll also use this as an InDesign exercise. So you'll learn the basics of placing text assets into your InDesign document. We're going to play with multiple ways of using text and type, um, placing imagery into there. Uh, you're going to be introduced to creating color schemes through the palette and the eyedropper tool. Uh, we'll play with rulers a little bit and finally export to PDF and JPEG. So you're going to make something a little bit similar to this, and I'm going to go through this right now with y'all. Um, the first thing you need to do though is make a folder structure. So inside my bottom right here on the screen I got all my stuff. So inside Vico 1414 Owen Lowry, that's for our course, I'm gonna make a new project folder. Now I'm using Windows, you're probably using Macs, so it's gonna be a little different. You're on your own for that one, but you'll be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and click the new folder up there and I'm gonna name it I'm gonna name it the project name which is flashcard project. I'm gonna do an underscore Owen Lowry. That way it's nicely self-contained. I'm gonna double click to go in there. I'm gonna click new folder four times because I know I need four new folders. The first one, I'm gonna rename to assets. This is where I'll put all my things like pictures and photos and whatnot. The second one, I'm gonna rename designs. This is where I'm gonna save my InDesign files and all that jazz. The third one, I'm gonna rename exports. So this is where I export images to, export final documents. And the last one, I'm gonna rename inspirations and with this being inspirations it's where I'll put like photos that inspire the look I want I'm not gonna do that for this project but make it a habit all right so the first thing I want to do now that I've got this awesome rad folder structure is I'm going to populate it with some assets so I want everybody to write a quick bio about themselves. It has to include your name, your age, uh, perhaps what um, your major is, things like that. Um, I'm gonna double click to open assets. That's where you wanna save it. I already wrote one and I named it owenbio.txt. So it's a text file. So when you save this bio, save it as a .txt if you can. Um, mine says Owen Lowry's a 36 year old self-conscious tool but he does make interactive art and it's friendly as all get out. The best thing about him is that he has a rat dog and an old motorcycle. That's awesome. Let's just place my bio in the assets folder. Next thing I want you to do is take a selfie um, and email it to yourself and put that in this assets folder or you can take a selfie on the computer and put that in the assets folder or you can grab one from social media like Facebook. I'm grabbing this one from Facebook right here, Owen Unicorn Cowboy. I was a unicorn cowboy for Halloween last year. I looked awesome. You know it. So those are my assets. Now I'm good to jump into InDesign. All right, so go ahead and open up InDesign. At the open window, which might look a little different than yours, um, you wanna create a new document. So I'm gonna click Create New here, or you can go to File, New, Document. Those both work. You'll get this new document dialog box. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go over to print setting. Up top here, there's print web and mobile. If I click print, you'll see we have letter, legal, tabloid, or I can hit view all presets. Letter half is what I want. So I'm gonna click on that. That's half of the normal page size. Over here, I'm gonna change the units on the right side here from picas to inches, 5.5 by 8.5, good. But I'm gonna change the orientation to landscape so it's more of a sideways, and I'm gonna uncheck facing pages. Up here for untitled one, I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna name it um, Owen Lowry Flashcard. Cool, so now I can just go ahead and click Create. I have my document up here uh, in InDesign. We can see we're using inches, and that all looks good. So now what I wanna do is create frames. Um, you'll understand why. One of the um, blech, one of the actual strengths of InDesign is that you can place things out and you can actually use concepts of design like contrast, repetition, proximity, size, and scale. And you can do that starting by creating frames. So I know this is gonna be a flashcard where I have my image, I have some text, I have my name, I have some color palettes. So over here, you can see we got this little like rectangle frame tool. It looks like a little uh, envelope. I'm gonna click on that. First thing I want to do is click and drag a big box. You can do this on either side, it's cool. You'll see that my guides kind of try to like pull me into sections. Um, that's good. There's my first frame. So now I'm just kind of planning out how I want things to look. I'm not actually building it much content, I'm just planning it out. 
Uh, I want to make a second box where my actual bio is going to go. So I'm going to kind of come right here, click and drag, and that's where my bio will go. All right, that looks pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to place some shapes down here. And those shapes are going to make up those color palettes that I want to make. And you saw that in the original thing. So I'm going to go to the rectangle tool up here. And I can just hit M if I want. M is the shortcut to get to the rectangle tool. V will get me back to the selection tool, but M. And I'm just going to go ahead and hold shift on my keyboard and click and drag. By holding shift, it gives me this proportional. If I let go of shift, you'll see that it like, I can make it oblong, but by holding shift, I get perfect rectangles. And boom, I got myself a nice little rectangle. Over here at the bottom left, I'm going to go ahead and switch these. See if I, by swapping those, I made the inside a color and not the stroke a color. That looks good. All right, I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard and that's gonna go ahead and take me back to my selection tool. So I'm no longer clicking, making a rectangle. I'm gonna hold down option or alt and click and drag. And when I do that, by clicking and dragging these rectangles, it duplicates it. I'm gonna do that a few times. I wanna have five rectangles. I'll have to adjust the size of these in a little bit, but let's not worry about that yet. And just so you can tell, if we click up here at the top right, you see this layers window? We have one layer, but inside that layer, we have all these different shapes. Um, that's gonna be important later on in the semester, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now. Now, like I said, these are all a bit too big because I wanna keep them inside the bleed area, which is this little line here. So I'm just gonna click with, make sure I have B on my keyboard to select my selection tool, click and drag, and that selects them all. I can then kind of go over to the corner here where I get that little double line, and I'm gonna hold down shift to do it proportionally again, and I can change the size of them all to kind of, and I'm just gonna go ahead and let it, until it clicks on with that bounding box. The snaps are nice, right? And let go. All right, one thing I wanna do with these is I wanna align them. Um, I want to make them actually proportional. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and select these all again. If you look up top here, there's a lot of different settings up here. Like you can align things by top, bottom, middle. But over here, you can change their distribution. And by, whoops, I did it too early. So let me go ahead and just do it like, I'll just mess these up a little so you can see. Let's click and drag. I'm going to go up and I'm going to align them by their center. Nice. And then I'm going distribu to distribute them right there. They all look really good. Rock and roll. Let's move that up a little bit. All right, here's something I haven't done, which is bad. I haven't saved yet. So I'm gonna do file, save. I should have done this before I even started stuff. So let's go into my, I'm gonna navigate to, uh, it's on my desktop actually, to desktop. Oh, I've got too much stuff. Flashcard project, Owen Lowry, designs. This is where I'm gonna save it. Owen Lowry, flashcard in design. And I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So now I have it saved and now a bunch of times I'm gonna hit like control save or command save on Mac when I'm doing things. All right, let's get to placing images. I'm gonna go ahead and select this um, first bounding box, the big old one. This is where we wanna put our picture. Now, instead of dragging a picture in or anything like that, I'm gonna place an image. Um, so I'm gonna go to file, place. You can hit control or command D to do that as well. Now, I need to find my actual image, and if I go back to my desktop, ugh, so many folders, flashcard project, assets, here's my image, Owen Lowry, Unicorn Cowboy. I'll click open, and it automatically places that in there. Now, the size is a little bit different, so if I go ahead and kind of hover over, you'll see that there's this middle circle, and I get that grab tool there, and I can kind of actually take this, whoops, command Z, I didn't edit undo, but I can do this to like change the alignment of this center thing. I can also double click. Um, let me click off and double click. You'll notice that I accidentally at a point grabbed the outside of that area and moved the whole text frame. Command Z again. I don't want to do that. You have two options. You can select text frames or sorry, just frames in general, which are those bounding boxes, or you can select this little guy here with this circle and hand tool, and you can move what's inside of it. But be careful doing that, because obviously I keep accidentally doing both. Um, the other way to get around that is just to double click it, and you'll notice that you get this more like uh, brown outside box. Now, if I try to adjust the size, I might mess it up there. Command Z. 
Um, so if I hold down shift when I do this, I can actually adjust that size proportionally, just like we were doing with the boxes earlier. So I'm just going to kind of get that cropped and nicely placed for my flashcard. I liked the original size a bit. Um, that looks good. I'm going to click off of it and leave that be now. All right, now let's place some text. So I'm going to select this next box over here, make sure it's kind of lined up okay. And I'm going to do the file place again. Place. I'm going to go to my text bio and double click that and it places it in there for me and automatically um, fits it within this box. So let me go ahead and I can adjust the size of the box to adjust how far off the edge that goes. I want to put a space between each of these, so I'm just going to double click on this text box now, click after tool, there, click after interactive art friendly, I'll get out, there, and I kind of want this to be smaller, so let's go ahead and click on it here, and um, I'm clicking off of it, I hit, I'm going to click on the actual selection tool, I'll click back on it and hit the T, this is the text tool, but I'm not going to select in here, because I want to affect everything. So with that selected, I can now go up to something like my font size. You see I have like a paragraph selection tool or a font tool here. I'm going to do the font tool. I'm going to go ahead and take this down to like eh, 11 feels good. Yeah, let's make it so these are on their own line. No, that's way too small. Why well, don't we make it even bigger? That's fine. Now, I'm not a big fan of Minion Pro. I don't know why it defaults to that. So I'm going to go to Arial. Yeah, Arial's good. Nice little sans serif rock and roll font. Ha-cha! All right, so the next thing I want to do is actually make my name. Um, and instead of making a frame like we did before, I'm going to use the text tool here to make a frame. So, or the type tool is what it's officially called. So I'm going to make sure, I'm going to click on that and deselect. Click on the selection tool and deselect. Be careful when you're in the text tool. If you hit a keyboard shortcut like V, like I did now, um, it will write the letter V. So a lot of times you want to actually point it to it with your mouse for this. So now I'm going to go to my text tool, to my type tool, and down at the bottom I'm going to click and drag out a frame. And this is where I'm going to, I'm going to let go, and it's automatically ready for me to type in, and I'm going to type my name, Owen Lowry. It's a good name. Now I'm going to go ahead and select this all. I can click and drag select it all, or I can just kind of triple click inside there to select it all. And I'm going to change my font. Now, go ahead and look through whatever fonts you want. Have some fun, but I know I like uh, Bauhaus. Um, let's see if I can find it. Oh, da, 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 da. God, I have so many fonts. There we go. Yeah, I really like that, but I want it to be much bigger, much bigger. Let's take it up. Oh, yeah, that's a good looking name. Owen Lowry, Bauhaus. I can just go ahead and adjust this a little bit. All right, I'm gonna hit Command S to save this because that's super important. So now we've gone over placing images, text tool, all that. Now I want to go over using the eyedropper tool to actually select colors from my image to make my own specific color palettes to, to design with. So I'm going to go ahead over here to the left on the tool palette and there's the eyedropper tool right here. If that's not what's set up, go ahead and hold down on it so you get this to open up and make sure it has eyedropper tool. So I can go ahead and look for colors in here. Let's go ahead and try to get this blue. I'm getting that. Then I'm going to go over to my shape, click on that, and boom, it places that blue color. Nice, right? But now I'm having, but now it won't let me do this again. I'm trying to click on the picture. So I'm just going to hit V to go to my selection tool. I'm going to hit I on my keyboard to go back to the um, eyedropper tool. I'm going to do that again with green. Boom. Nice. V with selection tool. I with eyedropper. Let's get this brownish red here. Nice. V. I. Let's get some of this sweet bubbly purple. Oh, I don't like that. V. I. Let's try to get a better version of this purple. Yeah, that's much better. I'm going to hit V. I'm going to hit I. And let's get some of that black from my mustache. There we go. It's more grayish, brownish black. All right, I'm going to hit V again. So now I've got myself a sweet little color palette here. And I'm just clicking and drag and select it all. I'm going to go up to this text and just close that up a bit. So I made myself a color palette based on this. I can change the colors of other stuff in order to make it match and look good, which is pretty nice. Um, but I want to make another color palette based on this. And I want InDesign 
to do it automatically for me. So I'm going to go ahead and just click and drag and select all of these boxes again, like, like so. I'm going to hold down Option or Alt, depending if you're on Windows, and you see you get that little double arrow. If I click and drag it now, it duplicates everything. Nice, right? I'm going to click off of it. I'm going to go back over to the eyedropper tool. First, let's hit Command S or Control S to save. I'm going to hold down the eyedropper tool, and there's that color themes tool. Let's go ahead and select that. Now I can select a color from in here, like my purple eyeshadow. Boom. So what we have going on here, it made a color palette for us. If I click on this little guy right here, you'll see we have a colorful, bright, dark, muted. It's not bad. So I'm going to hit escape to get rid of that. I'm going to try a different one. So how about that? We Colorful, bright, muted, nice. Okay, I paused the video there for a second because I was trying to figure something out. But, all right, so yeah, if I just click on them, I get colorful, bright, dark, deep, muted. Okay, that's cool. But I want to be, I'm going to hit escape. I want to be, I want my color palettes to be like actual color palettes, like triad, monochrome. So if I hold down shift on my keyboard with this and I look through, I can select a specific color, like that green there. And if I click on that, now what that's going to do is give me analogous, monochrome, triad, complementary, compound, shades. So these are the actual um, like color tools that we've went over in class. I like this analogous one right here. Um, so I'm going to click on the analogous right there, but I'm also, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to go over to add this scheme to swatches. So I'm just going to click on that. Now you're not going to see what it did automatically, but if we come over to this uh, right over here to our menu, and if you can't see that, you can go to essentials. Um, I'm going to click on swatches, and now we have analogous theme here, and those are those colors. I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that to rename it analogous unicorn cowboy. And hit OK. So I have that saved now in my swatches. Those are all the CMYK colors right there. Rock and roll. Let's go ahead down and let's go to a, ooh, a triad. Ooh, complimentary. Yeah. Ooh. Triad, triad, okay. I'm gonna click on this button right here again, the little plus with the thing. Um, and this is triad theme. I'm gonna name this triad Unicorn Cowboy. It's pretty great. I'm gonna hit escape again, and I'm gonna hit V to go back to my selection tool. Now this is gonna be a much easier way to change these colors. So let's go ahead and move down my name here. I'm gonna go ahead and click and select all of these and click shift to make this a little smaller. Looks good. I'm going to click and select drag to select all this. I'm going to hold down alt or option so I can duplicate it. I'm going to make two more color palettes. So I'm going to make the analogous and the triad one. So I'm going to select this first rectangle and under this analogous thing under my swatches, I'll click on that and I got it. I'm going to go to this one and I'm just going through and clicking each rectangle and then clicking the color inside my swatch palette and it automatically changes it. So now I have this custom one, I have this analogous one, and let's go ahead and do this with the triad. Now I've got this sweet, awesome, totally radtastic triad one going on. So I have different color palettes I can choose from, and it's really great. I'm gonna close up this swatches, I'm gonna hit Command S to save everything, um, and now I'm gonna go through and Let's go ahead and make some guides to line things up to. Let's say everything's, I'm just going to kind of move things around a little bit and not line them up. Um, so, all right. So let's say this is how it is. It's looking all messy, right? Well, if you hit, if you use the rulers, we have our rulers up here. If you're not seeing them, hit Control R or Command R to toggle them on or off. This is how we make guides. I'm going to go ahead and hover my mouse over the ruler. And I'm going to click and drag, and that lets me create a guide. I'm going to go ahead and put this guide right about there. So this is going to be my top guide, where I line up the top of things to. So I can just click on my different things, and you'll see that it kind of snaps to the guide. If it's not snapping, you can go to View, where is it, um, Guides and Grids, and make sure you have Snap to Guides on there. So that's snapping there. Nice. Now, I also want to make a guide to line everything up here to the left. So, 
I'm going to do that. Click. I'm, uh, whoops. I'm going into the, hold on. If you hold down the space bar, you can move around your uh, actual canvas, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to go into the ruler here. I'm going to click over, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this over so it's lined up with my text here. So now I have the second guy, and they're these light blue bad boys. So this one, make sure it's lined up to that. I'll go ahead and click and drag around these, line that up, click and drag around these, line that up, click and drag around these. Make sure that's snap to guide. All right, and this Owen Lowry here, I can make sure that snaps to guide. So there we go. Now these are all, my color palettes are a bit too big, so I'm just gonna click and drag on those to select them all. Go to the end here so I can scale them, hold down shift, make them a little bit smaller because I don't need huge color palettes. Click off, and I'm gonna bring the Owen Lowry so it's right there. Um, and I wanna line the Owen Lowry up with the bottom of my image, so I'm gonna click and on the ruler here, bring it down, make a new guide at that bottom of the image, and I'll go ahead and bring my text down there. Now you'll notice it doesn't exactly line up because it's lining up at the bounding box, not the text. So sometimes you just kind of have to eyeball it a little bit and hope for the best in there. I did that and it comes really close, but I'm gonna go ahead and just notch it down one pixel by hitting the down arrow with my keyboard. All right, I'm gonna select all these. I'm gonna bring them down. I might distribute them a little bit more. Let me go ahead and click and select these. See this distribute up here? Oh, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> uh, I have fun, don't I? Don't I? Command Z, Command Z. Okay, we're just gonna not mess with that for a second because I haven't practiced it and I'm not as familiar as I should be. All right, so. Here I am, Command S. I've got my flashcard almost perfect, but I want to play with the colors. I have color palettes here. I have color things I can do. So I'm going to start with Owen Lowry up here. I'm just going to go ahead and double click on this text, drag and select. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the eyedropper tool. Whoa, where is that? Let's go back to eyedropper. There we go. Um, and that's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to hit text again. There we go. I'm going to select the text. I'm going to go up top here where we see the text, uh, the text things. And where is the color of the text? Right here. So this color of the text right here, I can go ahead and click on this and then kind of uh, scroll down and go to my different, like my analogous and make it that color there. So that shows my color palettes by clicking on there. If I click on here, you'll see Owen Lowry. It's in that color. Let's go ahead and just click and select the rest of this text. And I'm gonna hit I, let's go, oh, not hit I, I'm gonna hit the I, now, all right, good. Now, all right, this is working. So I'm double clicking in here, click and drag to select the rest of this text. If I click the eyedropper tool, I can go ahead and look in here and find something. I was using my analogous, so I might use green. Look at that, it is not what I wanted from it. <laughs> um, what happened was, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag. You'll notice that it gave it um, an outline color as well, which I didn't want. So I'm going to click and drag that. And up here at this stroke, I'm just going to click none. So now if I click off of it, you'll notice it's back to green and it's looking good, except for that eye, which I need to fix. Click on here, click none. Owen Lowry is a 36-year-old self-conscious tool. All right, let's go down to my name. And I'm just going to kind of do that same thing. Um there. Yeah, but I don't want these outlines. See, all these have the stroke on them. I didn't want a stroke. So I'm going to take care of these all at once. I'm going to click and drag around these to avoid the stroke being there. And now I'm going to go to where we see this stroke right here, and I'm going to click none. I'm going to deselect it. All right, so now let's do this again, where I select the O and Owen, select my eyedropper, click on it. If I click off of it, there's no stroke on there. It's perfect. I can do this again. Click the eyedropper like that. Now, this isn't the fastest way of doing this. It's just a kind of convenient way that I found to do it. If you want to go a little faster, you can just go ahead and click on the different things. Go into here. Um, not using the analogous. I'm using the triad. So I'll click on the third one. Looks pretty good. An even faster way. I'm just selecting the N. I'm going to go to my swatches. And now I can just come back to the triad, boom. Here, come down to the triad, 
boom. And I'm just using this same triad color from my name to change all the different letters of it to the different colors. Boom. Boom. Now you don't have to do this. This is just me doing it because I want to look magical. All right. And if I select there, this is my awesome flashcard command S to save it. Now, the last thing I want you to do is to export this to, um, I mean, go ahead and futz with it, have fun. But I want you to end by, you know, I don't like this color text for the Owen Lowry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select this. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna make it Arial from regular to bold up here. Yeah. And I wanna make this Owen Lowry purple. So I'm gonna select that eyedropper tool, purple. That's where it's at. <laughs> Command S. All right, so let's say, let's export these as something you can share. So let's say I wanted to export it for print. I'm gonna go to File, I'm gonna go to Export, or you can hit Control or Command E. Now, I don't wanna save it in my designs. I wanna go back to my flashcard and save it into the Exports folder. I'm gonna change this to, down here, Save File Type. I'm gonna change it to, boop, 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 boop. Um, where's PDF? Adobe PDF, right there. Not interactive, just Adobe PDF print. I'll click on that, and I'm going to make it flashcard slash underscore print. So, Owen Lowry flashcard print PDF. Save. Now, this gives me a ton of options. I'm just going to worry about high quality print. Just change this to high quality print, hit export. All right. Now, if I go into my document folder, let's go back to there exports. There's my PDF, and it's a nice big PDF that can be printed out. But for me, I want you to send me a JPEG. Export a JPEG for me. So I'm going to go to File, Export again, and then save this file type. I'm going to change this to JPEG. Let's get rid of print. Um, I don't, and I'm just going to leave it Owen Lowry flashcard.jpg. Make sure it's going to exports and save. Now it gives you a bunch of options. Like, do we want this how high quality, medium, high, maximum, low? Medium's fine for now. You'll notice it's changing its resolution from 300 to 72. That is the screen resolution. It also changes the color space from um, CMYK to RGB. That's fine. Leave that as is. That's good because it's going to be actually displayed on a computer screen. Um, it will automatically do some saving for you very often, or changing of colors for you very often. So that's good. I'm going to click export. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click command S to save this again. I'm done in InDesign, so I'll close it out. Bye bye InDesign. I'll miss you. And in my exports, I have this JPEG, which is much smaller. So you notice if I preview it, the print is huge, the JPEG is small, but also look at the size, 203 kilobytes for the print and 32 kilobytes for the JPEG. It's so much smaller. So what I want you to do is take this JPEG, email it to me. Email it to me now. Boom, it's pretty. Um, that way I have flashcards and I can get to know y'all. Um, you can email me at ol724117 at ohio.edu. Um, <laughs> I guess uh, I'll just send you an email to email it to me. All right, I hope this was helpful. Rock and roll, y'all.